Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis. And I'm Ethan. And this is... Monster Comic Reviews. That's right. Uh, we're going to talk about some comics we read this last week. They're about two weeks old. I once again didn't look up what the dates were um, for when these comics are. Um, most people, as far as DC Comics go, are reading nines. We're still finishing up the rest of our eights. Um, I just want to take a few moments before we jump into the um, talk about the comics to thank everybody for um, um, subscribing to us and commenting on the videos. Um, it's great fun hearing what people have to say and um, if you're following us and you're doing videos and for some reason I'm not following you, send me a message or whatever, make a comment down below and I'll be following you because I like to follow anybody who's following me. If you've got something for me to watch, um, we're all for watching it. Um, me and Ethan have been talking about maybe doing some other different types of videos. Still has to do with comic books and whatnot. Um, but maybe we'll, we'll review some in some different way. Uh, we want to keep it entertaining. Um, we like doing this format because um, we like to have a serious conversation about the books and whatnot, but we also like to have some fun, so we might explore um, how else can we talk about comics that might be entertaining for you guys. Because um, I always worry that we split these weeks in half, but that we're pushing the envelope um, for... Um, how long you guys are willing to sit and listen to us talk about whatever. At any rate, with that in mind, I'll quit talking about that and we'll talk about comics. Okay, first up we have All-Star Western number eight. Yep. Um, I, I continue to enjoy um, to enjoy this um, story. Um, I like Jonah Hex. I find Arkham amusing, so the two of them together are, um, are, are pretty cool. Um... I don't know it's, that it's as exciting as when it first started out. Um, I, I continue to like the artwork, um, but it has its, it's its own style, and so I'm okay with that because it's its own style. There are some things that are frustrating about it. You brought up in the past about the fact that the women all look the same. All look the same, and they're all... Everybody, I, I like this comic originally because everybody looked realistic, but suddenly all the guys look the same, but Everybody else have really big heads and weird eyes and stuff, and that ah. drives me crazy. See, I don't and think they, they have the same. So I don't think they have big heads and weird heads and big eyes. I don't think so. But anyway, it, it it is definitely its own style of art. I think it works most of the time for um, the book. The covers are always really good. Um, um, as far as the actual story that's going on here, I, I do think it's amusing. They're fighting against some. Well, basically, white supremacists of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, Arkham, of course, continues to get himself into trouble. Um, yeah, and and he, there, thus by being in trouble, he manages to get Hex into trouble. Well, too. Of course, he always spills the beans, get Hex gets Hex in trouble in, in this one again. So it'll be curious to see how they're going to get themselves out of this. Uh, the backup story with um, Cinnamon and Nighthawk, kind of getting their That's origin fun. and whatnot. That's been kind of cool. I actually kind of like that better than the. The lead story right now, as far as you know, what's going on there. Um, yeah, I, I, there's some spark missing in this book, though, isn't there? Mm -hmm. It feels. It doesn't feel like the spark's missing. It just feels like instead of we've already got rid of the last storyline, we've gotten on to this one now. It feels like we're still in between. Right. So I'm hoping it'll pick up soon. So this story that it's going on right now, this isn't that interesting? I mean, because we're obviously in a new storyline, because now they're in New Orleans, and they're dealing with this. It's it's an interesting storyline, they just aren't... It's an interesting idea, they just aren't making it interesting. Right. That makes, well, sure. that makes sense. It, 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 it does. It, it sounds cool, and it sounds like it'd be fun to read about, and I'm... I mean, to some degree it is. Right. Because I still like this comic, obviously. Um... But it's not that interesting. They didn't write it in a way that was very interesting. Although I do think it's cool that they're introducing the league of people who are in the um, extremist group. Well, yeah, because there's obviously some other crazies in there besides just they're, the... They're pretty scary. Besides just the they're pit pretty fighter. Scary. I mean, there's the pit fighter, and she's scary in herself. And the fact that she's a yeah. pit fighter, and she tears people up for fun, it almost fun. seems like. Yeah. So... And then there's this guy that she's hanging on, I think. Maybe it's not the guy. Oh, there's somebody back there who's suspiciously tall and brute-like. 
then the really creepy person is, is this girl. And she's very short and she's staying over the side and she's the only one who's not in a suit. And she's in like this uniform, bluish, weird sailor thingy. Uh -huh. Right? And at first I was like, well, she looks like she just needs to get some sleep. But then when I went back and looked back over it again, I realized that she has some holes in her tights and cuts. And I realized she's holding a razor blade. Yeah, straight razor. Yeah. yeah. The old fashioned straight razor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's, she looks pretty sinister. They're creepy. Too. It's creepy. Yeah. And and the lead guy, his cane, it's totally a sword. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have a knob or a handle on the top. No, it's just a handle. It has to be a sword. It's, okay. it's a cane sword. Okay, could be. It's always a cane sword. Maybe it's a cane gun. Well, I guess it'd be a cane gun too. Well, I'm just saying. Um, yeah, uh, for me, like I said, the, the problem is is that the book is missing whatever the spark is. I think part of that is the fact is, is I don't think there's enough Jonah Hex in it. Um, and we just see basically um, Arkham getting high on opium supposedly for um, research purposes. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, it could be, but yeah, it didn't have, it didn't have a, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, we'll, I'll wait and see what the next issue is like on it and whatnot, but this is I like the characters, but I'm trying to um, um, turn over a new leaf as far as my purchasing of comics. Um, I'm, I'm subscribing to the, if I buy mediocrity, all I'm going to get is mediocrity. So, and this was pretty mediocre. Um, I like the character, but it's got to have more, the book has to have more in it than me liking the character yeah. um, for me to always continue buying the book. I need to spend my money on the stuff that I think is good instead of waiting for it to be good because yeah. they aren't going to fix it if it's not that I, think, I don't think this is broken yet though and i don't get, get me wrong it's not green arrow it's not no. teen it's not teen titans not teen titans not green arrow not blue beetle so um anyway what would you what would you rate this now that we've kind of talked all around it i give it a three not necessarily a strong three but a solid one just seriously right on the border it could be leaning to a weak three, it could be leaning to a strong three, but it's right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a weak three for me. Like I said, it just, it, it's missing whatever the pizzazz it needs to have, and I'm not sure exactly how to completely identify that, but yeah. Anyway, on to the next one, we're going to talk about um, The Defenders number five. What um, do you think? Well, now that I'm looking at the cover, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with Doctor Strange's outfit. He's underwater. I know he's underwater. In the distance. I, I know. And there's a big whale behind him. Yeah. You but, find the weirdest things to make on. <laughs> but I, I mean, suddenly his outfit's all pink and green. That's to filter from the from the light. But he's not. Silver Surfer doesn't look silver on it either. Yeah, but he still looks metallic and gray to some degree. He doesn't look like he's, like, brown okay. or blue or orange. He looks like the Silver Surfer still. I mean, Dr. Strait looks like he suddenly got I'll, I'll be sticking the cover back up while we're talking about this so you can, um... He's, he's got this weird pink suit, and he's not even there in person. He's down there in phantomy form or whatever. But I don't get what's up with his pink outfit. Okay, how about the rest of the book? Well, um... <laughs> I know I should know some of those under CE people or giants or whatever that's in the book that they find in the vault that they go through, but I have no idea who any of them are you except for Nemo. Okay. Nemo's the only person I, I know. I think Nemo's the only person you need to know who's there that's really going to make a difference mm -hmm. for the story. I mean, he's the key He's the key thing. The giant that was down there, I don't have a clue who that was either. Okay. And I really don't know who the... Who the... Ponytus sort of the, 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 the children of whatever that come up that have the kind of squid octopus head humanoid people mm -hmm. yeah i don't know who they are i don't know that any of us know who they are i think they're a new a new thing that's introduced yeah um this is just eh. i i was kind of bored of this comic i wasn't bored but it felt like some of the characters were out of character like captain what's his face not captain what's his face no more he felt I don't know. I mean, I know he's the king of the seas, but suddenly he seemed very determined to flaunt it about that he's the king of. You haven't read enough seas? Submariner. No, I haven't. He is an arrogant. He is an extremely arrogant 
but I mean, he is just uh, okay. For, for first... he is very. I mean, the first comics we've seen of him, he's kind of just going along with the well, thing. Well, yeah, because the first time I've ever read the Captain Namor was during the um, Fear Not Namor. 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 Okay, Namor. whatever. Anyway, he's not Captain. Not Captain. I don't know. It's not Baron. Anyway, okay. No, yes, first Prince time Namor. I read something with him in it was um. Was during the Vierzolf, and they had the you know during the hammers, mm -hmm. right? And it was when he gets kicked out of the ocean because yeah. his enemy gets one of those hammers and it has control right. over water. Right. And right. that's that's the first one wow. I've seen. See, that's he used the first to be. A, I've seen of him. So. He used to be a bad guy. Really? Yeah, he was a bad guy. Not surprising. He, he, his first he he, his it. first introduction and whatnot is is he would get in fights all the time with Fantastic Four because. He already owns three quarters of the world, right? Because he's the he's the prince king of of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So now you gotta do is deal with these annoying people that are on the land. Yeah. So yeah, he can, he's a bad guy. Lots of times, he's a bad guy. So you want to keep in mind that he is definitely an aristocrat most of the time. He he when he's with the other super his other super powered friends, usually he treats them with respect, but really he is he is a king. Mm -hmm. And and takes on all those trappings and whatnot. Yes. Well, in that case, I don't like Namor very much because you don't like kings. He was told button this, and I was uh -huh. just like, he's just like, yes, I rule. You know, three quarters of the earth. Uh, oh, you can't come down here and tell me what to do. No, uh, uh. I'm just like, eh. And I guess I mean, even if you were king of it all, to some degree, yes, I'd I I would be too. I'd be like. What do you mean you're gonna take over the ladder stupid octopus things? But on the other hand, a bunch of octopus things just came bursting out of a dead giant's chest. Uh-huh. To some degree, I think that you'd want to size up your opponent before you went, uh-uh-uh-uh-uh, before you were like, oh, no, I rule you, huh. Maybe that's just me, but... He's arrogant. I know he's arrogant, He's, he's bigger still. and badder than everything else out there, and he knows it, so he's not worried about some octopus-headed... Ladies, they, I guess. they should just get in line and serve like everybody else. I'm just saying, that's his perspective on it. Because, like I said, he is arrogant. I mean, that's his biggest flaw is the fact that he's... Arrogant? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should well, what do you, what, the comic. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, actually, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. We get to see some backstory for him. The hint of the fact is... is that Nemo's his dad. That Captain Nemo is his dad, potentially. That his wife, that his mother was... Having an affair on the side, mm -hmm. I mean, because he is half human. I mean, yeah. that's part of his. That's part of his issue too. Is he's got to overcompensate for the fact that he's not all Atlantean. He's human. Part human. Um, so, I'm getting that backstory. I thought was kind of interesting. I, I like the style of this comic. I like the art in it for this issue. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to read lots, and lots of it uh, with that style of art. Um, but I liked it for that. I think it's really interesting that there's another one of these. Um, Crazy ass symbols that are potentially could you know that could destroy everything, mm -hmm. is is down there. And there was another watcher set in there. And he's dead. He's dead. All of that's interesting. I, I yeah. think the overlying story, whereas this comic in particular may have not have been great in your opinion. Mm -hmm. I think the overall story is interesting. The the over arc. Do you uh -huh. think the over arc of this this yeah. this symbol and so the, in that case since we're talking about how. The idea of this was great, even if the issue wasn't. Are we liking this more than we like the Jonah Hex one? Because this one hasn't been as good as Jonah Hex, and Jonah Hex was really awesome at first, and now it's coming down off of that. Or what's what's the difference? What's the difference between this and, and this and the All Star Western? Yeah, what's the difference between between us liking this idea, even though it was an interesting idea but not necessarily written so well, and this, which was an interesting idea but not written so well? This, I felt like I was told something, because I was I, I learned something more about Namor's past and whatnot about print, about the Submariner's past, and in in All Star Western I didn't learn really anything. I know there's a secret society. I already knew that secret society existed. All I learned in that was is that um, that Arkham screwed it up and now they're in a pickle because of it. That's okay. that whole right for me. That's all there was to that story. Really, they yeah. fought a little more. You know, Hex and the girl fought some more. We we you know we, we learned some more about her personality. That blonde that she's pretty warped. Um, she doesn't necessarily agree with um, the people she's with, but at the same time, that's who she's with. 
and we, and we get a see some more of the society, but we really aren't told much, really, the story doesn't move forward a whole lot for me. Okay. Whereas this, this gave me some background to a character that gave me something that I'm interested in reading for me. That's why I like it better than All Star Western as far as where one failed at and one, where for me, one succeeded. Does that make sense? Yes. That's, that's how it is for me. And I like the overreaching arc of this. Uh, I like the I like magic and the weird, and that's what this this for the Marvel universe is kind of about is them dealing with the, the bizar with the bizarre them. with the bizarre, and there's this continued symbol thing that's out there, and they just discovered another one, and and what does it all mean? Because mm -hmm. at the very end, his administrator has translated the runes, and the runes basically say this is a device that could destroy everything. Does that make any sense to you? And we're left with the kind of hmm. Yeah. You know. It, well, yeah. I mean. We know to some degree that it's a wish machine. Right. But is that really what it is? Or is it Yeah. bigger? Yeah. Well, yeah. And so yeah. so that interests me. Whereas, like I said, All-Star Western doesn't really have I wonder them. why they didn't just take Iron Fist with them. I wonder. Yeah. He, well, he's up above. Remember? I know he's, he, I know he excavates, he's, I know he's he excavates up above and he's submarine. help excavating. But why didn't they take him in the first place with them? I guess it'd just be harder to have another person down there who can't breathe underwater or something. Anyway, what would you rate this thing? Um... Three. Yep, I gave it a decent three. Yep, I, 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 higher yeah. than Jonah Hex. Yeah. All Star Western. Sound All Star Hicks. Western. Sorry. Okay, next we have Justice League Dark Issue Eight, and they're still fighting Kane and stuff. Yeah, this is part three, right? Yep, part three. Um, yeah. Um, I en I'm enjoying this crossover, um, partially because I'm reading both books anyway, uh, with I Vampire, so it's not. I hope it's not, that this crossover gets more publicity for either and both of them. Right, right. Um, you can see in this issue, they're starting the transition because coming on pretty soon, um, Jeff Lemire is going to be writing it instead of um, uh, Peter Mulligan. Mm -hmm. And I think they got, we see Shay the Changing Man leaving mm -hmm. officially in this, in this issue. Um, I don't think he'll be back. It seems to be that that's a, Shay the Changing Man is a character that pretty much Peter Mulligan is the only person that really writes it. Um, yeah. It's his character, kind of a thing. So um, I think that's one of the reasons why it's being moved out because we know, at least I know from reading solicitations, that the team up, the lineup's going to change to some degree in it as far as that goes. So we see him get moved out. Um, we Chris see that Shaver. we see them attempt to run from Kane. This issue is pretty that much them, didn't work. them running from Kane and he's, and then finding out that really there's no way for him to run from Kane. Yeah, and it's really bad of and. And then at the very, very end of this issue, um... They give ultimate power to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to him. Because yeah. I felt there was a little bit of, maybe it's just me interpreting it the wrong way, but I felt there was a little bit of misdirection in this. I don't know if they meant to do that or not. But when Zantana's talking about, when Zantana finally says, well, when, I mean, when she says, so it's understandable that there's going to be a switch in power as she's talking about it. Uh-huh. I mean... It shows Batman fighting, and it, it makes sense if it was like more than one person fighting, but it was just Batman fighting. So I'm like, or are they going to give that ultimate power to Batman or whatever? So is he going to lose or something? Because somehow I don't really see Batman mm. permanently running around with some uber magical power. Mm. I didn't but, like, I didn't but like they, think of that. But they that's... pointed out Batman, so I was like, oh, cool, it's going to be Batman. That makes sense because they're talking about a capable individual who would deserve such power. And I mean, I know Batman's not necessarily all there in the head, but he seems to have his morals down pretty straight. Yeah. So, that would make sense to me, but then they don't. They give it to Andrew instead, yeah. which, that makes sense too, but I just thought they were going to give it to Batman because they point out Batman while they're talking about that, so. Yeah, you're right. They do really kind of, I mean, they show people fighting across the city, but it's really him they show. They don't show anybody else yeah. in this issue. They did before. I mean, they, they get, showed other people they fighting. They give them almost like a full, almost a full page. There's like well, panel Well, I, I, think, I think partially they're just wanting to remind you that they are in Gotham while this is all going on. And of course, as soon as you show Batman, you can pretty much assume that we're, in Gotham. We're, yeah. we're, in, we're in Gotham. Um, and so maybe that's why they had him on that panel and they wanted to show the fact that there's some power moving through. I mean, because the wind picks up and stuff's blowing all over the place. There's some power blowing through somewhere, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I kind of like the fact that, 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 um, that um, Madam Xanadu, she asked for this, asked for this power to be transferred, but it didn't really get transferred how she wanted to. Um, I thought it got transferred how she wanted to. I thought... I thought she just, I thought she wanted it transferred to Bennett because she thought Bennett was the only person who could take out Kane. But then Bennett was gone. 
Yeah, but she had faith that Bennett was going to be brought back by Constantine and, and Dead, Dead Man. Man. So that's what that's what I thought was going on there. Yeah, it was an okay issue moving forward. Um, actually, I thought the conclusion of it was the better of the of the two. Yeah. Which you want to just talk about that one now too? Sure. Yeah. That that would be um, next is I Vampire number eight, which is the conclusion of the Rise of the Vampires. Yeah, I like this comic. I like this comic in general yeah. more than Dark Justice, and Dark Justice has been okay to me. This the second arc isn't as good as the first arc was. I like the first arc a lot. That was interesting to me with the whole Enchantress June Moon thing. Right, right. But. The, the whole vampire thing. But maybe, uh, I'm hoping that'll get better. Um, this one, though, I like this. I like the way that, um, I love how Kane and him are fighting. I love the part, this is my favorite part of the book, where he's flying along and all the vampires are starting to attack him and he just obliterates them all oh, like that. Turns Bennett, all attack Bennett. The, yep, turns them all, all the dust and Bennett forms them back and Mary's only response. Well, everybody's like, oh no, oh, we're screwed, or darn it, he could use this against us. Mary's just like, ah, damn. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, she thinks she's all great yeah. and whatnot. And then, I love how easily he wipes out Kane. And all the fact that he's smiling the entire time. And he just kind of walks forward and it's like, poof. Uh, but yeah. no more Kane. It's really interesting that we're into issue eight, and this comic was billed as what is... I mean, it was Andrew Bennett versus the rest of the vampire um, world. I mean, that's yeah. how that's how this comic was going to be built. It was built as being him trying to deal with, you know, this past sin, basically Mary, Queen of Blood, mm -hmm. and and how how is he going to deal with her? He loves her, doesn't want to destroy her, but she keeps causing all these problems and whatnot. How's he going to deal with that? And now suddenly the comic's completely changed. Because mm -hmm. now he has the ultimate vampire power. He's got enough power that Constantine says, look, you've got way too much power for one man. I'm going to keep my eyes on you. Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. So, interesting. Interesting change of events. I'm curious to see... I'm curious to see how this book moves forward. Because mm -hmm. I really like it. I like everything about it. I love the art. I love the writing style. There's nothing about the book that I dislike. Um, so, I'm, like I said, I'm curious to see how it moves forward. Um, at the end of it, they imply they're going to go see the Van Helsings, which are, you know, a bunch of crazy vampire hunters. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to see a lot more of, Tri of Tig and um, uh, Michael, is that his name? I can't remember his name. Yeah. The other guy that helps spin it out that's a human. Um, but now our vampire, he's Lord of the Vampires. So I'm curious to see how that, well, I mean, what storyline they're going to How is that going to What storyline is going there? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this one was really cool. It was really cool watching him pop you know, pop a lot of power and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Everybody freaking over the fact he's got as much power as he has. And him, you know, basically saying, look, you know, yeah, and they're like, you've, okay. had a you've had a bad day. You don't really want to pick a fight with me right now, do you? Yeah. I also, I also like how Mary is like, awesome. Well, let's go kill everybody. It's like, no, we're not no, doing no, that no, either. no, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have a vampire society, but it's going to be a vampire society that's not killing everybody else. It's not slaughtering the masses. And We're not turning everybody else um, into The only thing I would have liked to have seen out of both of these books is some sort of resolution with Batman. Because it starts out with Batman going, I, I'm, I'm following you, I'm going with you, but I'm not letting you pull this, this stuff in my city. It's not going to happen kind mm -hmm. of thing whatnot, right? And I would have liked to have seen some closure there of Batman also going, you know, I got my eyes on you or or you okay or yeah you know is it ended i mean so suddenly they're all fighting all these vampires and all the vampires get nuked and then get reconstituted um you know what does that mean for for gotham yeah i would have liked to, to, to have ended that part um, yeah you know to sewn that part of it up that see how they used nice. see how they used him as kind of an introductory person it would have been nice to have had him yeah be the person leading out of it either even though i know it's not really his books and whatnot yeah it's cool though it was I mean, out of all the places I've seen Batman not in his comics so far, this is the coolest. Of course, it's yeah. not like I've seen him in tons of other places, but we saw him in Justice League Infinity. That was, in, that in, was lame. International. International. International, sorry. Um, international and um, Batwing, which is still pretty awesome, but not as cool as this. Plus, I love the art for this book. Yeah, I Vampire. Like the I art is amazing. So seeing yeah. Batman drawn like that, like, as still muscular but necessarily skinnier and he had pointy long ears and I'm a big fan of 
when his ears are more than just little bat nubs. Of course, yeah. I'm I'm coming from the previous fifty two where Dick Grayson fires his bat wings into people's heads, so or his bat ears into his people's ears. head. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I hey, feel right. I feel yeah, what would you rate it? Um I I rate this a four. Yeah. I Vampire 4, Dark Justice League 3, and I feel yep. bad about not talking about it where we're actually reviewing the comic, but this is something we always complain about. So those little ads in um, Defenders, they were pretty awesome because they were all written in that weird little gobbledy cook. Yeah, we didn't have to read any of them. I just yeah. ignored them. Of course, I tried to ignore them anyway. I kept looking, waiting for them to say something. And then they are all Back in to that. the Defenders, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the one thing I really absolutely hate about that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, so what's next? Okay, finally we have um, The Punisher. Number... Ten. And this is the second part of the Omega Drive uh, event crossover, crossover with Avengers Spider-Man and Daredevil. Yep. Um, enjoyed the hell out of this book. Yeah, no, it was pretty awesome. It's got Rudka, you know, writing, and I really like his stuff. It's got the... Um, it's got the regular artist back on the book. That, that was cool. Um, so I really enjoyed the art style in it. Um, this book had more to do, had more of, um, oh, what's her name? The Punisherette. The Punisherette. <laughs> and, and, and Daredevil trying to convince her not to. Kane, I think her name is. Not to be, not to be, um, not to turn into the Punisher. Not, not to go down that road of revenge. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff, which mm -hmm. I guess is an old trope. But I still enjoyed it because it was interesting, you know. Um, there's some great lines in this that I thought were pretty funny. I love that. Yeah, the, yeah, that missed me. I wasn't shooting at you. Yeah, Spider-Man comes, Spider-Man comes swinging back after after he left the Punisher in this this one place, and he comes back and he goes, "So did you miss me, honey?" or something like that. Yeah. And and the Punisher goes goes, "I wasn't aiming at you." And and of course Spider-Man is stunned that he said a joke. He's like, "Did you just you know?" And then of course. Things start to go happening crazy. Of course, the end of this issue was pretty nuts. Yeah. You know, he's Daredevil will stand up. He's gonna give this big speech and throw the Omega Drive down into the pile of the guys and show them that he's gonna destroy it because you've got these, you know, these mega superpower All, things. Everybody is there from everywhere, right? And Punisher Red shoots him in the back of the yep. head with a rubber bullet. And he goes shoots flying him, down into it. And we're just like, two, ah! Shoots him with two rubber bullets because she I wants just to like, die for herself. That was I awesome. I just like, wonder how fast the will Punisher to death. Well, and, you know, then Spider-Man pulls him out and stuff. And well, that's, his... a different, that's a different issue. Yeah. But, that's not this issue. But, yeah. You know, but, um, no, it was the... cool watching them build up for this and whatnot. And um, him and the Punisher to, to play by their rules without killing anybody and stuff like that. Um, and, by the way... Some of these covers have been okay to me because I know they're all supposed to show all three of them on them. At least I'm assuming that because so far all of them have. But this one is my favorite by far, probably because it's that artist. But I love how with each of them it's them and then their backgrounds are out of focus, like how it's Spider-Man and he's got the, he's surrounded by the spider webs, but you're really focused more on him than the spider webs and Daredevil standing on a rooftop with, you know, the skyscrapers and stuff in the background, and they're out of focus, and you're focused on him. Same thing with Castle. He's in some sort of hideout or whatever, because you can see the blinds and the light shining through from the back, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's cool. I like this cover, and I like the art. Yeah. For sure. So what are we rating this one? Um, yeah, I'll give this one a strong four. Yeah, you give it a strong three. It was fun. It was, it was a fine crossover. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for this half yep. of this week. Um, as soon as we can get the next video loaded up, we'll be back with that second video. Yep. See you in a bit.